Thanks for tuning in to The Trailblazers, where each time Shivy and I discover and unveil one millennial future leader who's using tech for social good. This time around, we found another hugely inspiring story with tremendous scope for him. Absolutely. We've honed in on Rowan Jones, a brave two-time cancer survivor who turned his very difficult personal experience into sheer motivation. Together with his team at Sparrow HQ, he's creating what he hopes will be an invaluable mobile community that will connect chronic disease sufferers both to each other as well as to critical resources and information. Their first product will focus on cancer, a disease that's alarmingly becoming so widespread now. Users sign up either as a fighter, survivor or supporter. Shivi and I instantly love this approach. We did. It creates a positive association, don't you think, compared to words such as sufferer or even carer. Now Rowan said to me that finding others that he himself could relate to during those pivotal deep dark moments in his own journey was an absolute lifeline and he wants to open that up to others. Let's hear from him. Rowan, thanks for being on the Trailblazers. Yeah, thanks for having me. So look, I know that your intention and the scope for Sparrow is to build mobile communities for those with chronic disease. And the first one you're focusing on is cancer. Now with a fair few people that I've chatted to, often a very personal experience does shape what they go on to create and develop. And I know that you're a two-time cancer survivor and that's truly a story of triumph and very, very inspiring. What can you tell us about how that spurred you on to develop what you're doing now? Yeah, so I had something called Ewing sarcoma, a type of a bone cancer. Um, it's on the rare side, only a couple hundred people get it a year. Um, but the thing about it is like, I never felt comfortable talking about like what was actually happening with them. You know what I mean? I was like the one that they'd be like, how are you doing? I'd be like, freaking awesome. I'm awesome, I'm doing great. Um, but I didn't want to be like, what's actually bugging me kind of thing, right? And you know, then I got, then it came back, um, my cancer, and I went through everything again. Um, and it was like scarier that time, and I was like a little bit older of a teen, and even more aware, and like, and uh, there's a couple experiences when I got to meet someone who had my kind of cancer, and I got to see the impact meeting me had on them. And I can imagine then with Sparrow, it's wanting people to feel like you're not on this lonely little island all by yourself. Exactly. You can connect to other people that are going through a very relevant journey. Exactly. People always tend to feel like they're the only one. They don't realize that like with cancer, there's 14, more than 14 million people that get diagnosed each year. You know, there's a lot of people out there that are going through the same thing. And that's a staggering number of people, which is why for me the social impact potential of Sparrow is absolutely huge and so I'm blown away by that. Now I love that your site Rowan sort of says that this tool is for, and I love the terminology, fighters, survivors and supporters. First of all talk me through the reasoning behind even using those particular phrases. Yeah, um, we just wanted something that was a little bit more uplifting, right? And so we looked to terminology that's used um, and the ones that fit us and our personalities because we're like, hey, you know, we're doing this every day. We want it to kind of reflect us as well. Um, and we think those three groups uh, are super important. We think, uh, you know, it's like, for me as a survivor, I have my own unique issues, right? It doesn't end uh, when treatment ends. Like, I, I've, my hair's never grown back. It's kind of a weird thing. Uh, I have all kinds of things that I need to talk about. And it's the same thing with supporters, you know, if your, uh, your child has cancer or your spouse, like that's really, really hard. Um, and often they're the ones that feel like they need to be strong and so they don't have anybody that they can talk to. Yeah. And what a beautiful thing to get to talk to. I know. So it's debilitating for everyone involved, Definitely. isn't it? So talk us through what a user of this mobile community can expect when they first go into Sparrow. What's that journey like for them? Right, so when a user downloads the app, they get on, they give us a little bit of information, uh, and then they're given a curated list of users that are closest to them by like cancer type, age, location, things like that. And they're able to filter through and, you know, to whatever preference they have, if they want to find people nearby or just ones with their kind of cancer. And they're able to talk and things like that. There's also, you know, something like a new age forum. So they're able to see what people with their cancer are talking about. They're able to find things they're interested in. Uh, whether that's health or whether those are like chemo tips or whatever that is. Um, and we think it's really important that we make all these things smarter because, you know, a journey of a patient um, changes over time. And we think that, you know, their journey on the app should change as well. Um, and those are things that are important. I like that. Sort of mapping someone's real life 
journey mm -hmm. with their experience on the app. Exactly. And it's such a brilliant example of tech for good. So ultimately, I think a lot of people will ask, why now? Because cancer, of course, has been a serious matter for yeah. decades. So what's prompted the timing? Yeah, well, I think it's, a, it's kind of a perfect time right now as people are really getting comfortable, and I think it's happened in the last decade or so, talking about cancer. And mobile use is off the charts right now, which is important because you can always have your phone. You know, when you're in sick in bed, when you're sick at home, you can always have that lifeline, right? So it just makes perfect sense that we can come and build that. And when you use the word lifeline, that immediately strikes a chord. You think yeah. for so many people, when they're in a deep, dark place, yeah. this might be like sort of the saving grace really at that point. And the difference Definitely. between someone emotionally going over the edge, even just connecting to someone else, it just gives me goosebumps. So you may or may not be able to reveal too much about this, but ultimately I know Sparrow as a startup want to open this up to other chronic diseases. Any plans for that in the future that you can talk about? Yeah, so that is definitely uh, on our radar and we think we can take what we learn in cancer and apply it to other diseases and help a lot of people. We've had some inbound requests from uh, different organizations that would like to partner up um, in the future. We're not allowed to talk about about that yet, but that's how we'll go about breaking into other other areas so we can really uh, make some good impact. And there's going to be such a multiplier effect here because oh, yeah. you're going to be actually providing such a kind of connecting platform mm -hmm. for people to have access to not just resources but other people, that yeah. human connection, the human keeping connection it so important. human. Yeah, that's brilliant. So I want to get a little bit personal now, okay, and kind of switch tacks and bring out a little bit of what makes you tick, what's Rowan like as a person. Where would you travel to if time and money were absolutely no consequence? Uh, and who would you take with you, actually? Um, well, an easy question for me, I would definitely go to Japan. I've never been, I did karate as a kid for like seven, eight years, I'm like a black, black belt. Not actually cool, because it was a while ago. I won't mess with you. But uh, always loved Japan, never been, so that's easy. Now, I believe that you co-founded Sparrow with actually a bunch of childhood pals, which, I mean, that's quite unusual, that's brilliant. What sort of mischief were you guys up to growing up? I co-founded with my two best friends, uh, Spencer I've known since we are like four years old, and Alex when I moved from San Francisco to San Diego when I was 12 and we spent like all our summers together. Pretty much as typical like California boys it gets. Like we girls, food. Girls, beach, we went to, uh, played in bands, a little bit of everything. So Rowan, look, at the heart of all of this, you know, with Sparrow as a digital tool, it's tackling a very, very human need. That of invaluable support for chronic disease sufferers at a time when they might really need it the most. And your personal journey, honestly, is a story of triumph, and I'm so thrilled that I've had this chat with you today. So thank you for being on the Trailblazers. Thank you. All right, so we're going to do rapid-fire questions with Rowan, literally putting him on the spot. Ready? Ready. You sure? I think so. Okay, let's go. Sneakers or sandals? Uh, sneakers. Rugby or American football? American football. Blondes or brunettes? Brunettes? <laughs> Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. San Francisco or London? San Francisco. Beer or whiskey? Uh, whisk. <laughs> Night owl or early bird? Night owl. Good, I like that. James Bond or Indiana Jones? James, all day. All day, anytime. Pizza or chicken wings? Pizza. Giraffe or teapot? <laughs> teapot? <laughs> that was not your question, we always do one of those. But you pick teapot. It tells me a lot about you. I'm gonna think about this one. Yeah. Danny, I was very intrigued by Sparrow when we first heard about them, right? But it's fantastic that we've been able to share Rowan's work and personal journey with you guys. I'm so impressed by how brave he is as a person and how he's turned his personal battle with cancer into something tangible that could be the safe haven that many are looking for. This is exactly the sort of feel-good stuff Danny and I want to share with you on The Trailblazers. Thanks for tuning in.
what, yeah. what? We should do this in red. Thanks for tuning no, in to the Trailblazers. Do do where each time we discover I'll and unveil. Oh. <laughs> don't do things. Don't mess with my hair. Don't mess with my oh. hair, man. Alright, oh, it's good. It's good. It's good. What's your problem? I don't know. You can touch the back. The yeah. Cool. Awesome. 